This is the HCSRO for Trimount, uh, designed to solve the historic problem of not being able to find mounting brackets for these little sensors, which are cheap, but uh, the brackets tend to be more expensive than the sensors. This lets you mount uh, three of them on a corner, with two of them at right angles on one side, and then you mount the other one at 45 degrees on the other side. Um, I've got some of these mounted here. Uh, set up because the problem I was trying to solve is I want to put more of these on my uh, robot. I want to have two on each side so I can measure the angle to the wall or to the front uh, but then because of the narrow uh, angles on these when you're on a corner like this you've still got a blind spot in the corner so I would find the robot quite happily follow the wall and at some point it's turning into the wall or it's turning around a corner and it finds itself at 45 degrees to the wall and it can't see it and then it runs right into the wall. The answer is add more sensors. So we've got these at the 45 degrees and I'm just going to use them for, for corner dete distance detection. Essentially if the corner one is closer than the ones on either side then I must be blind on a corner. So turn until you can get a good sense on both sides. That's the idea. We'll see how it works out. Uh, I've got two displays now just to demonstrate this. Uh, this one, as before, is showing the uh, eight uh, rectilinear sensors. So the number here on this, at the top of this row is this one here. And then the two in the middle of this row are these two. The two bottom ones are these two and so forth. And I've added this little uh, uh, 0208 or 0802 display here to display the four corners. So. Uh, this uh, number is that corner and as you can see they're all happily uh, moving their numbers around if we look particularly at uh, let's zoom in a bit on the numbers so you can actually see those let's turn it around uh, sorry about the crappy lighting I really have to figure out my lighting for these videos okay so let's take a look at the uh, corner one at the top right I'll put a barrier in front of that and we get, oh look, 67 millimeters. We'll move it out a bit. Oh look, 174 millimeters. So we got zero on this guy down at the corner here. But that's because he doesn't have a good bounce off anything because he's going across the, the room here. And I move the thing in, it goes down to 59. And I still have, if we come out a bit here, I got my uh, parallax. If you can see these numbers here, they currently say 87 and 60. There, I've evened it up 61 and 63. Go to an angle like this, now we're at 70 and 114. So I can calculate from that that, oh, I'm going into the corner of the wall there. I need to turn. And I can do that on the spot. I don't need to go forward and figure out, oh, I'm getting closer, I'm getting closer, turn. So that's the idea. We're making it up. Uh, take a look at the board here. So a little Arduino. This is our Octosonar X2, uh, I'm calling it. Focus. No, let's go closer. Let's do, let's do the old fashioned zoom. There we go. So this is the board and it's uh, using the PCF8575 chip, which is a 16 port version of the one on the uh, regular Octosonar. And then we got uh, four of the, uh, the Tri-State buffer chips. And uh, what I've done with the uh, breakout of the pins here, you'll notice that there's a, an arrangement of the pins here. Boom, boom. You'll see we've got uh, two rows of four, and then we've got an extra V and G on the end. And uh, the idea there is that if I only want to use the corner brackets, um, which have only got three sensors on them, I can eliminate a cable by putting these cables in at right angles because there's an extra V and G on the uh, end of those rows. So each cable picks up either a V or a G and uh, picks up uh, th either three of the triggers or three of the echoes. Uh, so you can eliminate a cable and tidy up your build quite significantly because when you're adding you know, a gazillion sensors that need four cables each, you end up with four gazillion wires. So the other things I got on this board, I got my little 
just made this up, a uh, little I2C uh, breakout. We've got four devices on here total. There's the Arduino as the master. We've got the Octosonar X2 as a slave, and then we've got the two displays also on I2C. When I put this on the robot, the uh, robot, which also has an embedded at Mega Arduino kind of chip, it will also uh, be on the I2C bus. I like I2C. I like to put things on I2C and see how much I can put on before it breaks. So far, I haven't managed to break it. Uh, this here uh, display is running on I2C. Got one of these little uh, cheapy I2C uh, modules for the display, and then I did a an intermediate board to move the pins around because the 2x8 display doesn't have the. It has a 2x8 uh, pin out. I'm not pointing at the right thing. It has a 2x8 pin out uh, instead of the regular screens uh, 1x16. So. Eh, maybe I'll make up a breakout board for that too. So uh, this is similar to my former uh, robot board except I'm using instead of my own homemade uh, micro board I'm using one of these nanos which has already got everything broken out for me. I am considering making up the X2 in a Arduino shield format so that it can sit underneath the uh, the nano shield and reduce the footprint of the whole thing for people that don't want to build a uh, a lesser sized robot they want to build something smaller.